Today we're going to take a trip back to the 18th century. I'm here with Chef Walter Stabe from the historical City Tavern in Old City, Philadelphia. Chef Stabe, thank you so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure. pleasure. Equally. What are we going to be making today? We're playing tribute to the 18th century one more time with fried oysters, which are very plentiful. Actually, oysters, there were so much oysters eaten in Philadelphia that the streets were paved with the shells of the oysters, believe it or not. That's great. Benjamin Franklin's favorite dish. And then we're going to do a pork medallion that is marinated in two different ales. It's easy nowadays because you can buy any fishmonger, any supermarket, you can get oysters already shocked. Right. It's so simple. The only thing you've got to do is you want to make sure that you buy a very, very, very fine cornmeal. Chef, now I don't want yeah. to get myself too messy here. I'm oh, going to go right. ahead and put an apron on as I don't want to That's mess up thing. this That's beautiful cocktail thing. dress <laughs> that I got from the Nitwit stores. Beautiful. Anyway, look here. So simple. I'll just show you quickly. We only have to do a couple of them. I already made them ahead of time. So a little AP flour. You want to you want to coat them really good. Then just in an egg wash. And then in the cornmeal. Cornmeal. And totally I love fine cornmeal. cornmeal. So you want to make me one or two of those just of like that? Next is the pork tenderloin. If you want to make this at home and you want to make this, you got to make sure you go find Hetfield. Hetfield's tenderloins are the best that money can buy. You're absolutely right. They're lean, they have lots of flavor. Also, they have a whole bunch of different ones that are fully flavored already, marinated. Listen to those oysters sizzle. They're liking it. And then all you, what's nice about the tenderloin, you have no waste. Even the end you can take. You take if the tenderloin is home like this, you take the end, look here. Just go like that. Now, do you use Hatfield products in your restaurant? All the time. That's great. And Hatfield is a it's local Pennsylvania company as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. But look at that. So you go like so. See, let me, see me. Watch me. So simple. Look at that. How much simple does it get? Just like that. How nice they cook up. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm going to keep this out for a second. And all I want to do in the hot pan is put some uh, butter. I have the, uh, the tenderloin already here that I told you, pre-marinated. You can smell the beer. Smell the ale. Oh, see? you sure can. It comes really good. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do it without uh, finishing in the flour, or you can put it in flour. What Either do you way. like to do? It depends. I like it just natural because mm -hmm. I have a very good demi, a good brown sauce. If you don't have a good brown sauce, then maybe do it cold. What happens is the flavor of the beer is so unique because uh, it has uh, Alberta spruce in the fermentation. Oh, okay. So the Alberta spruce. Smell it. You can smell it. And if you, oh, wow. and if you marinate your pork tenderloin in there, what happens is the flavor comes out of it. So now, get a little, glaze it on both sides a little bit. I don't, I don't want any much color on this one over here. So not too much color. No, no, you it's different. It's like what we, we call it actually in your poilé. If you want to be fancy, you want to deglaze it, it works extremely well. Love that. A little deglaze is good for that. And then you throw a little bit of beer I just gave you. Put it there. Normally, when I do that, I have a lot of work to do because I have a lot of different ingredients. But you have shortcuts for me today, don't you? I do have some shortcuts. We've and got our Duro products, yeah. which I'll go get out of put the freezer. Put it right in there now. Perfect timing. You start off with the garlic. You put in the, the basil, parsley, and you have the chili. Perfect. So you want to use all of these yes, in here? All of these. And how many would you like me to put in? I think one of each. One, one of each? Kilos. Okay. And these are great products. This garlic that I have here is actually one clove of garlic in each of these little cubes. So it's perfectly portioned. It's already minced. Now what I'm doing, I put a little more uh, Thomas Jefferson ale in there. See that there? Now you're going to put your herbs in it. You know, even so I dwell in the 18th century and my show is 18th century oriented. I would never ever deprive the consumers to see a shortcut, especially That's a delicious true. shortcut like that. These will actually keep in your freezer for up to two years, which is an unbelievable shelf life for a now product Now you see what like I have that. in there? Mustard greens. Mustard greens. Again, something forgotten half the time. So many people don't understand it. It's beautiful. It has a lot of flavor to it. So look at that. All it's I have to so do now, for you. I, I did my, my tenderloins at a very low fire. Now I got the, the demi or the brown sauce. Any brown sauce would work. Put it right over and I let the whole thing simmer. And what are we going to be doing with these potatoes? Potatoes, I'm going to smash them quick. Okay. Because uh, there's nothing better than freshly made uh, potatoes. I have uh, salt and I got nutmeg. A little bit of freshly grated nutmeg. Kind of brings out a creamy note. Absolutely. Nutmeg in here. Get me a big piece of butter in there. My mashed potatoes are rich in calories, but I don't What's care. What's your idea of big? This or you want to go bigger? No, it's good. Okay. You got it. And. Uh, Salt, 
You can reach behind me in the refrigerator and pull in the oysters that I already pre-breaded and stick it in the, uh, in the oil. So we're going to fry up some more of these yep. oysters. Yep. Once again, tell people you got to be careful when you cook in a thing like that, you don't want to start no fire. You don't want to overcrowd that pot because yes. it'll drop the temperature of the oil. And also when it spills over, not too pleasant. No, not at all. Those look wonderfully all right. crispy. A few more. Go ahead. So the mashed potato is just used as a, as a base, as you can see. See that? Now all I'm taking is I'm going to my pot. I'm getting the pork tenderloin out. Put the pork tenderloin on top. And now I'm just going to get the, the wilted, but not cooked to dead mustard greens Beautiful. on top. What a nice presentation with the height. Well, it's good eating too. This is really what I like about of it. Course. The flavors, the flavors come right out of it, so it's beautiful. Little extra sauce over the top never That's hurts. It. And then we do a little bit, just sprinkle a little bit of parsley in this plate, and it's like a so on here. You want to take this to the table while I finish to. the oysters? Since we're sticking today with uh, mustard green, I'm going to put a little bit of mustard green Use on the bottom. Use what we have on hand. Yep, it's a beautiful mustard green on the bottom. Put the other a few more oysters on top there. There we go, and we are ready to eat. Well, I'm that. hungry just smelling all of this food. I can't wait to dig in, especially with these oysters. They're gorgeous. There's nothing better than cornmeal oh, oyster. Tell me about it. And these are huge, too. And then I have a nice herb remoulade over there that goes extremely well with it. Wonderful. But the only thing I would do when I normally would do this is just take a lemon and cut a couple of lemon slices. Nothing fancy for that. Just straightforward. Everybody likes a little lemon with their fried seafood. Exactly right. Just do a couple of edges like so. That looks like a meal fit for any 18th century nobility. <laughs> Chef right. Dave, this is a fantastic spread you've made us here. Let's dig well, in. Dig in here and make sure you put the Do you mind stuff. if I use my fingers? I'm just going to get right to. in there. You should. And then stick it in here. Seriously. Do it like so. Looks like a delicious remoulade. Oh. Mm. Put the doctor now. That is right on. Mmm. Beautiful. And then the pork. Let's try the pork. Try that. I'm going to cut your piece here. Mmm, there's mustard greens. Yeah. Love a little bitter green to go on top. See how nice the tenderloin is? Look at that. See, Very, it's, just, it's so moist. And it's just cooked right. Look at that. Look at that. See it? Moist. Yum. A little green on top here. And a little mustard there. green. There we go. Get a little, little bit in each bite. Mmm. Mmm. That is fantastic. Chef. Simple, elegant, from the farm to the table. Not overworked. You see how the natural fit? But most importantly, it's delicious. But do you see how those herbs come out of there mm -hmm. without a lot of work? They really do. You can absolutely taste the herbs in that sauce. So, three time Emmy Award winning chef. Thanks to you. It's, it's been fantastic. a pleasure to have you today. My pleasure, Cheers. Too. Thanks.